My parents are coming over for a visit, and we're going to have a lovely Sunday supper together. And it also happens to be Michael and my wedding anniversary. I made roasted root vegetables, which I'll reheat and toss with a warm vinaigrette. And I've got my pear and spiced chocolate tart chilling. I still have to poach the pears, but the tart's just chilling in the fridge. And now I want to get the roast in the oven. This is a pork loin roast. I want them to walk in the door with the fragrance of home cooking, so I'm making an orange marmalade and mustard glaze to go on top of the pork roast. Got about half an onion in the food processor and some coarse grainy mustard. The grainy mustard isn't as intense as Dijon mustard. And orange marmalade. I remember my mom used to do pork roast with an apricot glaze. So I think she's my inspiration for this. A little bit of butter will help baste the pork roast at the same time as the glaze is melting onto it. A generous amount of salt and pepper. Mmm, that smells good. The orange and the mustard together is a natural combination. The rest of the onions in my roasting pan. And I'll just cut an orange into segments. The juice will cook in with the juices that come out of the pork roast. I'll pull the segments out though before I serve up and carve the roast. I'll use some of Karen's Bartlett pears here. For the roast, I like to keep the skins on the pears. These pears are on the firmer side, so they're nice for roasting. They'll hold their shape. Last bit of fragrance to add, some fresh herbs. A bit of sage, thyme. This is a beautiful pork loin roast. over the pork. The mustard and marmalade will cook in with the pear and orange juices, so I'll have a lot of liquid to baste with. I leave the roast in the oven for about 15 minutes at 375, then I turn it down and let it slow cook. Within 20 minutes, the house is going to be smelling fabulous. And the last thing I have to make are the poached pears that I'll slice and put on top of the tart. I use equal amounts of sugar and water to poach the pears. A little lemon juice lightens them up. For on top of the tart, I picked three small pears. These pears are a little more ripe than the pears I used in the pork roast. For poaching, I do prefer Bartlett pears, but if they're not in season, Anjou's are a good option. There we go, get the poaching liquid hot. You're not simmering or boiling the liquid, it's actually a little bit cooler than that. Just pop them in the liquid. Pears have a tendency to float in the poaching liquid and they won't cook evenly. So a great trick is to put a lid right on the surface of the liquid, and I make that from parchment. As the poaching liquid warms and rises to the top, it catches the parchment, floats over the pear, and back underneath again. I've let the pears cool in the poaching syrup, and the last thing for me to do before I slice them and put them on the tart is just sprinkle them with a little brandy. This will make a special finish to the evening. That tart sets up so nicely with that truffle chocolate filling. Poached pears are pliable, so I can shape them on the tart as I need to. I'll store this in the fridge until it's time for dessert 
but I'll pull it out about 10-15 minutes before I actually want to slice it. It softens up the chocolate a bit. I've got everything for supper ready. Now to get myself ready. My parents should be here any second.